Welcome to Creating Our Holy Home. I'm your host, Jillian Hofer, and I am so excited to be speaking to the Catholic moms, the Catholic wives, the Catholic women who are trying to bring their families to heaven one small intentional thing at a time. I'm sure that you've heard the phrase before, we are in the world, but not of the world. And while that is So true. There are certain elements of being in the world in this current digital age that we just can't get around. And my big question has been like, can we make these digital and online and social media spaces ways that we can get to heaven? Can we bring holiness to them? Today's guest is literally answering that question for me and not only the way that she personally lives online, but also the way that she's raising her family and her kids in this digital world. Katie Ruby is mother to five kids, ages toddler to teen. She runs the gamut. She's also a Twitch partner where she does a cooking stream on the streaming platform Twitch. She is the producer and host of the Frontiers of Faith podcast, which is from the Pontifical Mission Society. She also co-hosts the podcast Is This for Kids with Jonathan Blevins, where they talk about different shows and movies and basically argue about if it's for kids or not, kind of based on their very different Catholic parenting styles and worldviews. I'm so excited to bring Katie on today because she has some amazing perspectives to share that really challenge the way that I think about my own behaviors and how I treat my time online and in digital spaces, but then also gave me a ton to think about when it comes to how we can make our homes more holy using the digital spaces that we all have to exist in at this point. I really hope you enjoy this conversation. Katie. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. This is a beautiful setup you've got going This is fun for us because Katie and I are friends IRL. So this is like, I basically just all day today have been like, I just get to hang out with a friend this afternoon, which is so fun. This is what all of content creation is, is just like make a friend and then hang out with them. It's so true. Yeah. It's the best thing ever. Well, more than you being a friend, I'm excited to have you here on the podcast because you have incredible experience on the podcast you co-host with Jonathan Blevins, Is This for Kids, where I know you get into a lot of like media consumption. Media stuff. But I want to start with you first. You are host and will co-host with Jonathan on the Is This for Kids podcast. You produce and host and all the things for the Frontiers of Faith podcast for... The Pontifical Mission Society. Amazing. Yeah. And then you also are a Twitch streamer and you are a Twitch partner. So like literally your job is to be online. Yeah, pretty much. I spend a, I spend way too much time on the internet. How do you like? Tell me about your experience being online. Wow. So because uh, because I'm an elder millennial, my generational swath of the internet is just really wild. It's kind of everywhere. Everybody who's kind of my age grew up in this AOL chat room, giving out your age, age, sex, and location to some random dude who was always a 14 year old female from California, <laughs> regardless of what he really was, right? So we grew up in this like very wild west of the internet and we're sort of learning as we go along. So for the first couple of years that um, that my kids were born, we posted everything they ever did on mm. Facebook. Um, now, Facebook at that time, a lot smaller. There was a lot there was a lot fewer people there. But then as it expanded out, then um, we had Instagram and things like that. And so if you go back at my very, 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 very first Instagram photos, there's pictures of of a lot of my kids. And when I first started on Twitch, my kids were constantly present um, but then as things went along, as I've been online for more more time, uh, having my kids present was less and less appropriate. So it started to lead to me phasing out my my Twitch um, channel. And then, um, you know, we had some very scary situations. We got swatted uh, while I was doing Twitch, which is a very, very niche thing to have happen where a SWAT team was sent to my house, which That's was so very, scary. very scary. Um those kinds of things. So it really changed kind of my approach to using the internet. And then as my kids got older and I now have a two teenage kids, one is a, an eighth grader and one is going to be a a junior in high school. You really have to model those behaviors for your kids. Mm -hmm. And you start to see your kids like retreat to their bedrooms and constantly looking at their cell phones. And you think to yourself like, this is, this is, what they're seeing me do. So they think that this is appropriate and you have to start changing your own ways of doing it. And really kind of the moment I realized I was way too online or way too attached to my phone was when my, uh, she's now three, my little baby. Um, She's probably like 18 months or so. She was very verbal, very early. But when she wanted my attention, she would say, mom, look at my eyes. 
look at my eyes. And when then, she was 18 months old? Mm-hmm. Oh, like when my she wanted, gosh. She wanted to show me something. She would say, look at my eyes. Because she knew that if I was looking down at my phone, she did not have my full attention. If I was looking down at my computer, I did not have her full attention. Now, to wow. be fair, this applies to me looking at her siblings as well. Mm-hmm. But realizing how often my kid has to tell me, look at my eyes, when she wants my undivided attention, I was like, I got to do something different. And how do you reconcile that when it is literally your job to be online sometimes? Like, how have you found that balance? So... Uh, I am now the queen of iPhone limitations. I'm yes. very good at, at parenting, at, uh, not parenting, what is that called? Childproofing an iPhone. I can make them do, I'm so good at it. Like, call <laughs> me, I can help you. But um, so I had to set my own boundaries the way that my, I did with my kids or my oldest child now is allowed to do kind of anything she wants to because she's displayed um, a growth in virtue that I think she can handle having mm-hmm. a phone. But when she was younger and we were like phasing her into a phone, we would be like, you have one hour. Okay, now you have two hours. You had two hours, but you were abusing it and you were constantly asking, so we're going to back you back down. Like wow. we had to do those kinds of things. So for myself, I was like, all right, Instagram and, and, and Twitter, you have two hours per day. Like between the two of them combined, two hours. And then after that, we're not using it anymore. So I have to tell myself, you know, I'm not going to spend time in the morning scrolling Instagram because I have to, sometimes I have to look for like reels and stuff for work to be able to to make something usable. Okay, great. If I'm going to have to do research on this, I can't be looking at it right now. I'm Mm going to have to have that time set aside for something else. I I don't know if you remember this, but you and I have been um, for the past couple of years on and off on the same media team for our church where we just kind of are in a small group of creatives from our church that help out with little things here and there trying to bring more media and goodness to like what our church is producing and how we can cover events that our church is doing and put them out to the world a little bit more. Um, in one of our meetings, I remember you talking about how you're like, you know, I'm a Twitch partner. I'm online all the time. I'm doing these things. But a lot of my following don't know I'm Catholic. And I'm like feeling this pull towards like, how do I kind of start to evangelize without being mm-hmm. that like Catholic person all up in their face all the time? I've seen you since that conversation. Like you now produce this Frontiers of Faith podcast. You are now like, I see you tweeting all the time about the faith. How have you found that balance of bringing your faith and maybe even like subtle evangelization to the ways that you spend your time online? Yeah. Well, when I, on Twitch, like it was never that nobody could tell that I was Catholic. It's just, I wasn't proselytizing and I, I wouldn't, I just don't think that that's appropriate. I think it's very important that if you're going to talk to somebody about something as important as Christ and following him, that Mm -hmm. you need to know and love that person. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't know and love that person, you're just shouting into the void Mm -hmm. basically. And, but I, I wanted to kind of like bridge this gap between you never really talk to somebody who's Catholic, who's just living their faith online. And so I, I started doing, you know, like I did a cooking show on Twitch. So we didn't, we didn't cook meat on Fridays because it's just like a super easy way to say like, all right, we're not, we're not making anything mean. We, we, you know, it's a really lame sacrifice, but it's one that we bond to Jesus. It's a thing. It's, and I used to kind of like just brush it over. Like, this is my Catholic superpower. I get to offer this up for other things. And, and we started incorporating little things like having, um, on Twitch, you give bits, which is like sort of like throwing change into a guitar mm-hmm. case if you like what somebody's doing. And if somebody gave 99 bits, 99 cents, I would give them a saint card and be like, your saint of the day is this one. And then I would describe who that saint was. And, you know, they all really like to get um, St. Maximilian Colby was a real favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. There. Big, uh, or St. Marianne Cope because she's real metal. Yes. Um, <laughs> carving things into your chest just goes over well on Twitch. It's amazing. Um, people are into that. We have more metal things in Catholicism. Have you told them about so catacombs and bones and memento mori and all the oh things? Oh, my gosh. They could get into it. it. So many things to get into it. We, we did an episode on, uh, on Is This for Kids about Wednesday. Yes. And so many people were like, when you Google Wednesday, they're like, oh, this is there's so much occult in there. I was like, yeah, yeah, a little bit. But also she talks about having a Dia de los Muertos uh altar in yes. her house and she's obsessed with with skulls and Maro- like they're definitely catholic there's a guy who wrote a uh, he's a kind of a controversial figure who wrote a thing called the bad catholics catechism yeah and he's like no the adams family are 100 percent catholic <laughs> that's why all these like white anglo-saxon people feel real uncomfortable around them so true. that's <laughs> like, so funny <laughs> I really like each other mm. way more than is appropriate. The fact <laughs> they only have two kids is a little questionable. Yeah, it's the only thing that's making us a little <laughs> bit suspicious. What's happening here? But then again, you know, they're 
Maybe something's going on. It's Who knows? none of our business. No, it's none of our business it's at all. It's not our business. Yeah. But they're probably Catholic. <laughs> they're they're definitely Catholic, 100%. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I don't even remember what the question was. Yeah, no, you were talking about on Twitch. Um, oh, people, yeah, so yeah, you give out saying, people. Yeah, but like involving your faith in a way that's more, it's just natural, like living out your faith in front of other people. Yeah, if you... Um, it's just like how you love your husband or you love your kids. Like it's very hard to know somebody who has an intimate relationship with somebody and not know that other person. Mm -hmm. So like if it would be very weird if you didn't know who my husband was like that, if, like you, not you, you don't know me. <laughs> if you didn't know who my husband was, right. that would be freaking weird. Like he's a part of my life. He's an everyday occurrence. So Christ is the same way. If you love Christ, if this is a real part of your life, that you're actually living this faith, that this is a real life thing for you mm -hmm. you can't not have it be part of yourself you know and so that's I, I just kind of leaned into that and what was funny is I would get a lot of feedback from people who were like you know you're the only normal Christian I've ever met and I was like you've probably met a lot of normal Christians they just weren't telling you that they were Christian. yeah <laughs> you just had no idea um so I, I think that that's a challenge for us as, as Catholics to be like, you know, be a little bit more open about the situation because you're probably chill and normal and people would like to know that there are chill and normal Catholics. Yes. So when your kids started getting older and they were getting on social media themselves or having more access to like the Internet and social media, I'm assuming they were following you and you were following them. Is that correct? Or did you guys do it kind of like? separate no so i only have one kid on social media right now um oh really yeah my how'd you manage that i just i'm really good at an iphone <laughs> i'm really good at it's it. amazing <laughs> uh, I, but we also like we start talking to our kids about things like like being online be how you're representing yourself we start talking about theology of the body concepts extremely mm. young like my three-year-old knows that she is her body and her body is good like mm. so you start talking about these concepts at social media and and all of those things so so young and it's not surprising to them when you tell them like hey you're not gonna we're not gonna allow you to be on social media till you're at least in high school and and originally our, our thought was that we weren't going to do it until 16 mm -hmm. our oldest daughter is very mature and we went to ncyc this year and they had an instagram like scavenger hunt thing yeah. that they were supposed to do and so we let her get Instagram because of NCYC. And and the agreement was you were going to delete it when we got home. And she's like, okay, but what if I got that? And she did, gave a really good argument. She's going to do a good job with it. And so we let her have Instagram. Um, we let her have Snapchat, but she ended up deleting it because she didn't like it. Mm. Like she was just like, eh. Good but, for her. Yeah. So I've only got the one kid who's on, on social media so far. My son's not there yet. He... We, I, I really believe that you have to let your kid grow in virtue before mm -hmm. you can put them in this. And and so many parents find themselves backed up against a wall where they're like, every other kid has Snapchat, so I have to let my kid have it. And you have to be willing to be the bad guy and be like, use use texting. Like, yeah. I, I don't know how to help you here. Like, you can't have it yet. I haven't seen that you can handle those kinds of things. I've seen the way that it hurts you when people say things to your face. Like, I've seen the way it hurts you when your friends leave you out of stuff. How is it much worse is it going to be? when you can see there every moment and you're not allowed to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Like until I can tell that you've grown in virtue to the point that you can be okay with yourself when that kind of stuff happens, I don't think it's a good idea for you to be on this. And so we've kind of set this thing that there's going to be a time limit. You know, when you're about 15, 16, you might be allowed to be on social media if you've displayed these things. And that's already known in our family. It's sort wow. of like a dating age. You know, yeah. you say if your kid knows they can't date till they're 16, you're not going to have this discussion. They're they're going to come to you and say, everybody else is a boyfriend. And be like, great, you're still not 16. This has been the rule your whole life. Yeah. So I think that's the thing parents don't think about is you need to start planning to set those limits long before you're up against them. Yeah. And I mean, do you say those things to your kids or is that a discussion between you and Louise, your husband? We, we talk about, I mean, Louise and I talk about it when they're not in the room, but oftentimes we'll involve our kids in those discussions because it's good for kids to see how parents work these things out and that there is a logic to it mm -hmm. and that it's not just us arbitrarily picking an age. Um, and that's that's very true. Like if you you can't just say 16 and you can be on on Snapchat because what if that kid is really immature? Yeah. Um, or what if that kid is super mature early? Like you you need to be able to let your kid be part of those conversations. And I think that the more we give kids the opportunity to weigh in on those things to like show that they can be mature, the more likely it is that they're going to be mature. So 
along the same vein of like the Is This For Kids podcast, which can you just explain really quickly kind of like the concept of the podcast? Yeah. the So Is This For Kids came out of my friend John's brain when he went to go watch. What movie was he trying to show his kids? It was Free Willy. He went to go <laughs> watch Free Willy <laughs> with his kids. We just did an episode on it recently. So it's out there if you want to watch it. But um, John was going to show his kids Free Willy. And he's like, this movie is terrible. <laughs> like, I didn't remember how bad it was. Now, John's, like, standard for terrible is way different than mine. Like, I'm a much more permissive, talk your kids through it kind of parent. Yeah. He's more of a let's just never show this to them ever kind of parent, which both of those things are valid and, and, and things you can look at. But um, and then he came to me. He's like, hey, would you want to do this? We can talk out media concepts with parents. And a lot of times we end up going, we do a lot of, you know, current shows that kids are watching or current movies. Um, but we also go back and look at stuff that we watched as kids. And, you know, like I, John's was Free Willy. Mine was Spaceballs, which is <laughs> not the same. I'm obsessed. There is so many swears in Spaceballs <laughs> and, and just hardcore innuendo. <laughs> and I was like, oh, gosh, what was the, what, how did I watch this as a five-year-old? It's but so funny. It's wild. Watching yeah. it through your, like, all of a sudden when you have parent eyes yes. watching something that you grew up Recently, I rewatched. I grew up watching um, Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dream Coat, the Donny Osmond version. Okay. That was like it, it's a just the campiest thing you've ever seen. And I'm like, it's a Bible story. I grew up watching this with my grandma's. It is. It is like so racy. Yeah. There. I mean, it is the most like campy racy there's like boobs like it is there's full, boobs there's boobs in fully donny osmond? in donny osmond's oh joseph with the best technical dream coat and i was like i cannot believe i watched this at my grandmother's house and i'm sure it was just the assumption of like Why do I it's a bible it story oh no it is <laughs> i will stand by i love it like i am obsessed with it mm -hmm. My daughter, who's nine months and old, and I, we listen to the soundtrack all the time. Sure. It'll be a minute till we probably watch the movie together. Yeah. But along that vein, like, so tell me about your and Luis's um, kind of like process or discernment process or discussion process when it comes to having those decisions made of like, w what will we let our kids watch? And you have kids of all different ages. How do you facilitate those discussions and decisions together? Yeah. So... I'm home all the time. So most of this falls to me. Luis really kind of just uh, appreciates that I'm willing to do that. So yeah. I, I'm thankful for him, you know, being on board with that. If he ever felt badly about something, we would talk about mm -hmm. it. But um, for the most part, it's, it's sort of like one at a time kind of decisions. For me, I'm, we have this discussion on, is this for kids all the time? I'm not terribly worried about swear words as long as they're not um, derogatory toward the human person like we're not using racial slurs we're not calling ladies the b-word like mm -hmm. things like that um i don't think that that's a problem but I just, like i distinctly remember we saw uh, jurassic park when my kids were little um my older kids were little i still have some little kids but um there's a part where there's a guy sitting on a toilet and the t-rex comes to eat him and he says the s word loudly and maggie looked at me and she says mom can i say that word and i said yes when you are in that exact scenario <laughs> You're on a toilet, T-Rex is coming, coming at you. <laughs> Let it fly, sister. Like, you are perfectly fine. And we've always talked about swears and, like, the uh, like if you have no other word to use, I'm going to get you a word of the day calendar. Like, so, you know, swears are not really a huge issue for me. What we do really worry about is, is hypersexualization in kids' mm. content because it is rampant yeah. right now. Just absolutely everywhere. And it, it, it almost feels like a lot of the content that's out there is sort of a pipeline to pornography, which I hate. I, I know that that makes me sound like a crazy person. But for example, um, the, the example that I always give to people is in the new Goosebumps that's on Disney Plus. So most people think, oh, Disney Plus, it's fine. Mm -hmm. This new Goosebumps, by, in episode four, the first three episodes are fine. In episode four, there's a part where one of the characters looks at another one and says something like, oh, this is a type of emotional edging. And most adults are not going to even know what that word means. And if it had stopped there, it probably would have been whoosh, over most kids. Yeah. But then that the character he's speaking to turns around and says, is that a sex thing? <gasps> and he says, yeah, look it up. Whoa, whoa, on the show? On the show. I'm like, you flat out dared my kid to Google oh, this term. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and I'm I'm looking at this like, I first of all, at the moment, I had to Google it because I didn't, hadn't heard the yeah. term before. Um, but when I looked it up, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like the things that pop up when you google what is edging is porn like oh you're, so my gosh if you're looking if these are shows if this is the kind of thing that's getting embedded into to children's shows our kids are really quickly getting hyper sexualized at an extremely young age um and and i worry about 
you know, not even just from like a, a Catholic modesty mm-hmm. or, or chastity perspective, but from the perspective of what is this kid going to think is appropriate for an adult to say to them, yeah. what kind of abuse can happen in those scenarios. And just, I'm not, I'm not here for it. So I'm a little bit more lenient than my co-host on Is This For Kids and when it comes to language or violence. But when it comes to hypersexualization, I am the giant prude who has five kids. So do you watch everything that your teen kids, I mean, it's not realistic, but like is the best case scenario that you kind of watch something before they watch it and then kind of discern if they're going to watch it? Or do you just watch it together and facilitate discussions based off of it? It depends on what it is. Sometimes yeah. we watch it together and sometimes, um, like, for example, Jenny and Georgia's extremely popular show that was on yeah. Netflix. My oldest child saw it before I did. I knew nothing about it. And and when we decided we were going to do it for the podcast, she's like, oh, mom, that's not for kids and you're going to hate it. And um, she came to me once. I didn't realize it at the time, but she came to me once at one point and was like, we need to get rid of Netflix. I just watched something. I know it was inappropriate. I know you wouldn't be a, like, and the babies are going to see this. Because we had had that those conversations for so long, like wow. we are always very open with our kids. They they can come to us and talk to us about these things. And if, if they tell me like, I watched something that you wouldn't approve of, I'm not going to punish them. Like you just came to me and told me that we're not going to have that. So we're gonna we're gonna make plans for how did that make you feel, and then what do we need to do to make sure we're not watching it again? Yeah. But so we didn't have Netflix for a really long time. And then I found out later from my teenager, like that was Jenny and Georgia was the show she was watching that made her feel like she needed to get rid of Netflix. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think it's so easy, especially being online and like seeing the things that are out there and understanding, like you said, like there are real dangerous ramifications for things that our kids see online and when they're consuming things on streaming platforms and we don't have the capacity to watch everything that our kids are going to watch like once they hit a certain age Mm -hmm. at least that's what I would assume and hypothesize how do you not like just end up being fearful all the time of the stuff like how how do you do that uh that's a great question yeah so it's we were talking earlier, we've talked before about how raising kids is a little like having a dog. And I know that people <laughs> hate that analogy. And I have so many kids. So Hear us out. Hear us out. Wait it out. <laughs> having kids. Okay. So there's this beginning part where you have the babies and everything's real low stakes. Like it feels like it's high stakes, but in reality, it's super low stakes. And then there's this middle part. Kids are middle heavy where you have to, from ages, let's go six to 10. That's your most intense parenting that you're going to do. You're going to be correcting a lot of behaviors. So you're going to be rewarding a lot of behaviors. The same way you do with a puppy. Mm -hmm. You can't let the dog pee in the house without correcting the peeing in the house. You can't let the dog pee outside without rewarding the peeing outside. Unless you would like to have a 60-pound monster who's peeing everywhere, right? So it's the same thing with kids from like, depending on the maturity of your kids, six to 10, you need to be having lots of conversations about what's an appropriate way for someone to touch you. What's an appropriate way for us to be talking about sex? What's an appropriate way for, um, you know, for, for boys and girls to be interacting together? What are some words that are not appropriate? What do you think when you hear somebody saying, like when you hear people at the pool who are swearing Mm -hmm. like crazy in the summertime, you say, what do you, what? What kind of impression does that give you? Do you think that those people sound smart? Do you think that those people sound like they're well thought out? You have these conversations heavily, and it's a lot of work between 6 and 10. But then by the time they're in the ages where you're like, okay, I'm giving you a dumb cell phone. Um, and by that, I mean not a smartphone, not a... Yes. Yes. Not yeah, being yeah, yeah. about the cell phone. <laughs> but like, stupid cell phone. It's a freaking cell phone. <laughs> right? Um, I'm going to give you a dumb phone, and, and I'm going to trust that you can do this, and you're going to be on them. You're going to be checking in to see how they're doing. You're going to be looking at that phone. What do your text messages look like? Are you sending pictures of your schoolwork to each other? Are you Mm -hmm. cheating? These kinds of things where you are just heavy into the virtue building of that child. Much more important than whether or not they're consuming bad media is whether or not they're talking to their parents and whether or not their parents are helping them to grow in virtue. Mm -hmm. And that always has to be the end goal. We as Catholics get this like crappy reputation for being to rulesy and to, you know, this is bad, that is good. And um, that's not the point. It's not, it's not whether or not you're following the rules. It's whether or not you love the Lord and you're growing in virtue to try to more, more align yourself, your will with his. Mm. And so you got to kind of do that. So for a little while, while you're the parent, you're sort of taking that role for God. It's very important that you want to have the same will as God. So because your children are going to want to have the same will as you. So you're this weird mediator at that time. 
So you can, when your kid gets to 13, 14 years old, you can not be afraid because you, you know, you grew a good kid. Can I give you a really goofy example? Please. I would love this. I asked my son if I could tell this story. So please. Yes. Does anybody's like, don't tell your kid's business. I asked. He had a crush on a girl and he's not allowed to date till he's 16, but he had her phone number. And we always talk about like, if you're not allowed to date till you're 16, what does that look like? It's not like you're not going to have a crush when you're 13. You can have a girl that you think is special. You can, you can treat her specially. It's important that you treat all people with respect, but it's okay if you feel specially toward one person, but it's very important that you respect her and things like that. So he was, he was uh, texting with this girl that he liked and we went to check his phone because we do. And he had a ton of deleted text messages. And I was like, boy, get over here. What was here? What, we're going through like all the secret folders. Let's figure out where the, what photos were hidden, yada, 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 yada. And he's like, what do you think I did? And, and he's like, all we were doing was sending dumb pickup lines to each other. And then they were embarrassing. So we would delete them after we sent them. Like, and, and I was like, okay, maybe because I couldn't find any, any photos or anything like that. And we still took his phone away. Like, yeah. You can't be deleting text messages. That's not acceptable behavior. We took his phone away for a little while, yada, yada. But he came in and he's like, mom, just so you know, I would never ask a girl to send me inappropriate pictures because I know that when girls do that um, and then the boy doesn't like them anymore, they like hurt themselves. It hurts them. And I really like her. I don't want her to hurt. So even if I don't talk to her later, I would never want her to hurt. And I was like, I grew a good. Oh my gosh. And that, I mean, that had to have come from conversations. Like you said, like going Mm -hmm. back to like theology of the body and just basic like human dignity and virtue building. Yes. You have to do those things first before then the kids get these tools that are like inherently sometimes hard to uphold those virtues, even as adults. Yes. Yeah. And it's amazing that he put those things together. Like he's heard the, the oxytocin when you, when you have relationships with you, when you kiss people, when you spend time together, yada, yada. And he knows that. And so he put that together. Like if she's showing me parts of her body that other people don't see, that's going to cause that bond. And when we break up, it's going to cause a problem. Just so cool. It's so cool to hear your kids say something like that because you're like, it wasn't all for nothing. So much of parenting is just this like slog of oh every day. Like just keep cleaning up the pee. Just keep treating every time <laughs> they sit. Like you just keep doing it. And it feels like you're getting nowhere. And then one day it's just holy heck, this actually worked. You go to bed with a big smile on your face yes, like, like, yes, I did it. My kid's phone is taken away because he was naughty, but he gets it. <laughs> and like, you'll get your phone back in two weeks and I trust you won't do anything stupid It was again. a net gain yes, for that one, for sure. Everything was good, yeah. It's amazing. I think a lot about how, like leading up to this conversation with you, I was thinking so much about that phrase that gets thrown around a lot in church circles of like in the world, but not of the world. Mm-hmm. And I personally have like, a, I mean, it's the truth, but I've complicated feelings because there is this tendency that I've seen more and more lately of people to just like then shut themselves into this little like echo chamber and not engage with people outside of their own little community that agrees with every single thing. And it's like, if we look at the WWJD of, all, of it all, like literally what did Jesus do? He went out to people who hated him, who didn't agree with him, who were sinners, who were all these things. He dined at their table. He went and stayed at their home. He blessed them and he brought people back to life. Like if we are not able to do that in online spaces now, Mm -hmm. it's like, what happens to the church? Yeah. And I think it's amazing how you have taken that yourself. Like you have figured out this way to live out your faith online. And that's now trickling down to your kids. But like, how have you seen that play out as your kids have come to the age of like choosing their own choices for media and choosing how they go about social? Like how have you seen maybe the seeds that you've planted come to life with that? Gosh, I hope I don't embarrass Jesus with any of my answers. Like that's always my thought. Like I don't want to be an embarrassment to our Lord. Um, It's hard. It's, it's very hard. And when you're trying, when you love the people of the world, when you love all of my people on Twitch were largely atheists and eventually I had to leave Twitch because it wasn't appropriate for my kids anymore. But like, I still love those people and it was, it was important to me and I care about them and they don't share a lot of my same values. It's hard. It hurts. I have family members who have 
belief systems that are so deviated from ours and I love them and I would love for them to believe what we believe, but I'm not going to abandon them because they don't. Mm -hmm. And I see that in my kids. And that that's actually really hard as a Catholic mom because like I see my oldest daughter, she talked to us because she got invited to a party. Uh, a friend of hers was like, Hey, do you drink? And she's like, no. And she's like, well, it's all right. We're going to, we're going to drink, but you don't have to. And she was like, mom, I don't think you would want me going to this party, but could I go to the party if I promise I'm not going to drink? And so we had, we had to have these conversations about whether or not we think that's a good idea. And it hurts her to be like, I know my friends don't have the same belief system that I do. Mm. And I, and so she often feels uncomfortable around people and, 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 Unfortunately, that is living in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of a lot of the way that this comes out, and I, I want this to be hopeful. She's a loving and kind and sweet person. It's just really hard to to see that. And it's, it's hard to live it. And so we have to take a lot of consolation in our Lord. And we have to spend a lot of time with people who do affirm our, our belief systems. And so it's a very like it's a tightrope constantly. Um, and my son has a little bit of a lesser problem with it because he, he's more of a leader type. People mm. will follow him if he does those kinds of things. So, um, so if he's like, uh, he has a t-shirt that says Frick vape that he walks around wearing, like he's so proud of the Stop fact that he's not going to be vaping. So funny. He's like, mom, can I get a virginity rocks t-shirt? Like <laughs> Shut up, I love totally him. totally into being <laughs> whatever he is. Um, wore a rosary on his wrist for like a year. It was so wild. But anyway, like but when you're not, if you don't feel confident that you're the popular kid, no matter what, then it's hard. And, and so that's the thing that I would say this is the biggest, you know, I see it. I see that she, she loves her friends. I see that she cares, but I see that she's not judging them, but I know it hurts her to not feel in included. So that's just one of those things that that's going to be a problem with, with raising kids in the faith nowadays. Oh, it's so hard. Cause yeah. it's like, you know, her coming to you with that is a little bit of that, like, oh, I did it right because she understands, yeah. like, the gravity. But then it's like, this is growing up. This is realizing that it's like, oh, wow, I have to watch my kids make really hard choices now. And it's not fun. Yeah. It's and there's going to be a point at which, like, my saying, no, I don't think it's a good idea for you to go to that party. Like, she's going to eventually leave my house and she's going to go to a party yep. with drinking. Totally. Um, And so there's... I, I trust that she's going to make good choices mm -hmm. and I trust that she's going to eventually make a bad choice. Like that's going to happen. Yeah. But that's the thing with our faith is that we have the, we have reconciliation, which I grew up as a Protestant. I converted as an adult. So, um, having that option of like, you're not ruined, you're not ruined. Mm -hmm. you, this thing happened. You go and you speak to somebody and, and Christ absolves you through this guy and it's, it's great. And, and you can continue to love Christ and you can continue to build because it's always about virtue building. And sometimes you, think you have more virtue than you do and you have to step up, take a step back. It's just, it's just like apps, you know, you mm -hmm. had all the apps, but then you weren't doing so good on them. So we took them away and then we'll work on it. It's, yeah. it's always just this back and forth, push and pull. Okay. I have a very, um, I have a very hard question to kind of end this. And then I have one easy kind of fun one. Okay. So, good. okay. Do you think being in this digital age right now, like being online, mm -hmm. Is that a hindrance to us getting to heaven or do you think it can be a uh, help? Oh, gosh. I th think for some people it can be a helpful thing. Mm -hmm. I think this is very individual. Like uh, personal piety is going to be a huge issue here. Um, so if you find that you are the kind of person who your blood boils when someone's being wrong on the Internet, and that was me before the age of 28, like – you get real mature at 28. It's really helpful. <laughs> but like prior to 28, I was like, I'm going to have political fights with people left and right. And you're like, man, I, that was not good for my soul. So if you are the kind of person who still can't hear people be wrong on the internet, you maybe need to back off mm. for your own, you know, sanctification. If you have gotten to the point that like you're fine with somebody being wrong and you can look at them and say like, if you say so, Jack, and walk away, then then you can probably be fine and not just be fine, but you can use it to glorify God. I, mean, I get to tell the stories of missionaries who travel all over the world on frontiers of faith. It's un 
unreasonable to me that that should be the case. And the only reason I get that opportunity is because I was on Twitch doing a stinking cooking show, which led to me getting invited to it. I mean, you were there when this whole thing happened. I was like, why am I being invited to these Catholic things? I don't even do Catholic content. This is wild. And then, you know, I, our Lord uh, is, is good, but he is not tame. Mm-hmm. And so you can, if you can find yourself using social media well, you can find yourself finding opportunities to serve the Lord in it. You have done that beautifully, my friend. It's been very inspiring to watch you do it. I know no. you're like cringing. You're like, don't come don't me like Jesus. <laughs> don't embarrass <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, okay. Last question. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Creating Our Holy Home is the name of this podcast. What is one thing that you're doing to like keep your home holy right now? It can be super small and insignificant. It can literally just be surviving the day. But like, what is one thing that you're doing to keep your home holy? Oh, wow. Um, let me think. So we have, um, I'm going to give you two things. Yes. Amazing. You're so an overachiever. I know. Look at me. Um, so the thing that I think everybody says that they do, but I, if, if you're all actually doing this, I'm a terrible parent. Okay. <laughs> we have family prayers. Um, and that's, n- I don't think that most normal people are doing a daily family prayer. Mm-hmm. So we make all five of our kids come into our bedroom every morning. We go over what are your intentions for the day. We, and this is a great way to like check in with your kids, wow. what's going on, what's on their heart, what do they care about? Teach them to pray, like teach them to, to bring all these things to God. And you have to like redo it a bunch of times. Like we're giving our intentions and then we're going to say a memorized prayer because we're going to hold those intentions in our heart. And then it's like a whole thing. But like doing that and teaching your kids to pray is so huge, uh, absolutely gigantic. And then like reiterating when they're not listening, like, hey, this is we this is such a blessing. We get to talk to our Lord. Like we got to you got to focus kids. Sometimes I do that in a very not cute way. <laughs> your Lord is listening. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> um, so there's that. But then also we've we've kind of I, I'm a terrible home decorator. I'm really bad at it. So um, all like everything that's decorated in my house, my my my. My aesthetic, if you will, is Jesus. Like, just various <laughs> forms of Jesus. So I've got, like, um, I really like uh, ink ink stamping prints, like those kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Um, so I have one of, like, Jesus and the bread line that's in my living room. And we have a lot of sacred art. We have a literal three-foot canvas of Our Lady of Guadalupe in our dining room. I'm obsessed. Anybody who comes to my house is like, whoa. <laughs> so what's this about? And I'm like, she's our girl. Yeah. Uh, and and I think it's maybe probably weird for my non-Catholic friends to come over and be like, this is a lot of Jesus, man. But uh, <laughs> a lot of Jesus, a lot of Mary, a lot of Joseph <laughs> going on in my house. But our kids have like grown up with that as normal now. They're like, yeah, yeah, my mom likes Jesus a lot. But we don't make it like a weird um, like art museum type thing. It's just like very simple. That when we were we were super broke before I started doing Twitch. So like my first sacred art type things that I put up was I got my neighbor who has pretty handwriting to write a bunch of Latin mottos. And then I framed them. Oh, beautiful! On a piece of paper, like it was a sharpie and paper, and I still have them in my room. Uh, and one of the frames is broken. It's fine. Um, I but, love that. Yeah, just little tiny things that you look around your house and you say, "This house is full of people who love Jesus." Um, and and it's not a weird reverent like you. I mean, it's not irreverent. I don't want to use the wrong word, but like, it's not a museum. Yeah, these are not like perfect, beautiful paintings. Two of them were painted by a member of our youth group. Um, at our at our parish, like they're accessible, real art that really matters to us um, that that we love, and um, or at least I love. The kids will have to deal. Um, <laughs> it's your house. It's my house, and you get your house. You can decorate with whatever you want. Um, but it's it's I don't know. They they look at that and they know that that's meaningful. That mom is going to love that because mom loves Jesus. Katie, this was amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely, Yay. thanks for having me. <gasps> Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Creating Our Holy Home. This show is sponsored by Catholic Home Goods brand, Our Holy Home. And we'd love to offer you 15% off your first order. So head over to ourholyhome.com and use the code podcast at checkout. For more sustainable practices and tips to get your family to heaven, subscribe to our email list at ourholyhome.com slash subscribe. We'll be praying for you and your families this week, and we will be back very soon with more.